And I'm going to talk to you about a secret element, Joel 2 and 23. Joel 2 and 23, and then we'll back up once you've read that. Don't you love when people shake things up and do things backwards? 2 and 23, you'll know this. It was quoted by the Apostle Peter on the day of Pentecost. But we're going to go back to the original text. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. Look at somebody and say, cheer up. And rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. What month are we in? That's what we're believing for here today. God's going to give us an outpouring in the first month. But what's the secret to Joel 2 and 23? Well, back up about eight verses to Joel 2 and 15. Here is the secret formula to get you to Joel 2 and 23. You ready? Here we go. It's simple. It's very simple. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify fast. Oh, I got some amens on that. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Get elders. Gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priest say, that's me. We're a chosen generation. We're a royal priesthood. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. And let them say, spare thy people, O Lord. And give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? Verse 18, last one. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. We're talking about secrets this morning. Psalms talks about a secret. You can probably quote this with me from Psalms in 90, first chapter 91 and 1. says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There's power in knowing where the secret place is at. Area 51's talked about a whole lot out in Nevada, that place where the U.S. Air Force keeps all their secrets, and they claim there's a few UFOs out there. Also, Area 51, we're going to talk about Element 21 because there's a secret to having revival and having apostolic revival. I want to talk to you today about the secret place. One more time, you just lift a hand. Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you for the sweet opportunity to be here, the sweet people of God, the anointing that's in this house, that sweet flow and rush of the Holy Ghost that flowed in this place in such a special way. We give you glory and honor, might, dominion and power and praise are yours. We link up with you today. We come into agreement with the Holy Ghost itself and say, God, have your way in this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody said amen. amen. God bless you and you may be seated. Probably one of the last gifts I remember getting from my parents right before my father passed away was a cherished gift and is a book written by Pastor Ken Gurley, First Church, Pearland. Texas. There are some great secrets in this book. We're going through something called Element 21, 21 Days of Prayer, Fasting, and Devotion. And there are some great secrets in this book we'll be sharing with you as part of a daily devotional. Anybody get up at 5.30 in the morning? Well, there's, I saw 20 hands. Y'all surprise me. I don't. However, there will be persons who are premiering at 5.30 tomorrow morning. Get up if you want to get up that early. Otherwise, do like me and watch it on the replay. Who will be sharing on our social media outlets different parts of what you are seeing right here. But in the front of this book is such a special, special inscription because it's written by my mother, 621-2023, three, three uh, months before my father passed away. And it's, it's signed, love mom and dad, but mom would always write for dad. It says, Jason, prayer is what has made you successful. Prayer is what has brought you through darkness. Prayer will take you the rest of the way. If there's anything I want to know about or be known as is a person 
of prayer. The Bible says in Revelation, there's going to become a point in history that the prayers of the saints are going to be poured out on this earth. And what happens next is unbelievable. If you've ever walked past that little prayer room up in the front side on a Tuesday afternoon at 1.30 in the afternoon and heard the mothers in Zion travailing before the throne of God, you'll know that heaven is shaken, earth is shaken by the power of his people's prayers. Evidently, it was passed on to the next generation because the next generation, I found a clip, not just senior pastor uh, Gurley, but the associate pastor, Tyler Whaley, his son-in-law, shared an incredible moment. And I want to take about three minutes out and share this with you because it's worth seeing this morning. When you talk about the importance of reading your Bible and spending time in prayer, I feel like for me, as far as my personal testimony goes, it was it was really in the context of relationship with my own children that that I fully came to appreciate and recognize the power of of spending time each and every day with God in his word and in prayer with my kids. I, I've come to the point to realize that that, yes, we can we can see each other in passing. We're, we're in the house together. We, we live under the same roof. But the joy of our relationship is just spending time together, talking to each other, playing with each other, eating dinner together, doing all of the stuff that, that you really remember about life. And, and my kids know that, that I love them when I spend time with them. I know that they love me when they tell me, Daddy, let's go outside, let's go play, let's go, let's go play with a frisbee, let's go run around, let's go ride our bikes. That dynamic of, of time and, and communication being the source of, of real deep meaningful relationship, that's what the same dynamic that comes into play when, with my relationship with Jesus Christ. It would be one thing for me to say that I love him, but to, to never spend time talking to him. How would a marriage be if you, you say, you know what, I love my spouse, but I'm never going to talk to them. Well, when it comes to the things of God, when it comes to the kingdom of God, the depth of my relationship with Jesus Christ, I've found personally is directly related to how much time and how much energy and how much effort I want to put into that relationship. Well, if communication is the source of health and strength and just about any other relationship, it's no different in my relationship with God. And so by creating space in my day to talk to him and to let him talk to me and, and spending time reading his word, studying, studying out his principles and, and letting them find a place in my heart, that's where the strength of that relationship comes from. Prayer and Bible reading really are it's like a two-way street in that when I, when I pray, I'm, I'm getting direction from God, but I'm also at liberty to, to tell him about my struggles and my trials and my day. He's, he's hearing me and I'm hearing him. Same thing with the Bible. I, I, I read the Bible and I, I look to it for, for guidance and direction. And I know that it's, it's the highest authority of my life, but I, I also look to it for, for correction. It's that, it's that two-way street of relationship that I'm, I'm talking to God. I'm hearing from God. That's what prayer and Bible study really look like in the life of, of a healthy believer. We, we talk about discipleship and, and, and becoming more like Jesus Christ. But in the book of Acts, it said that they devoted themselves to, to prayer and to studying doctrine, to, to studying the word. And so if I'm going to truly be the best follower of Jesus Christ that I can be, if I'm going to truly be in a meaningful relationship with him, then I've got to find time in my day to day life to make room and make space to hear from him and let him hear from me. And it's in that communion, in that relationship that that my life in him begins to grow and I, I become a better follower. I become a, a better child of his. Just like my own children love me more when when I spend time with them, 
You'll come to love him more when you spend time with him. Believe that today. He that dwelleth in the secret place, he that lives in the secret place, when you move in the secret place, when you make decisions in the secret place, when you get your day started in this, I don't know anybody here that's got a prayer closet today that you can say, this is my place. This is where me and God have a relationship together. You know that there is something powerful about being in the presence of God. David was a prophet. He was a a poet, he was a musician, and he prayed a lot about everything, everything. He said some things to God that might curl your toenails. He says some things to God that you might think, well, I don't know if that would be respectful or not, but he had a relationship with God. If you want to go back and look at some of his prayers, it's a great way to learn how to pray. For He wrote down many of his prayers and put them to music, creating much of the book of Psalms. He wrote, in fact, a gooder part of the book of Psalms that has been the prayer book for Israel and the church for the last 3,000 years. David knew how to pray. David had a heart for God. David was a man after God's own heart. David had a secret weapon. It wasn't the fact that he was a poet or a politician, or even a priest in the tabernacle of David. It was something that David knew how to pray. There was an intimacy that happened when David began to talk with God. If you ever want to go back, look at some of the Psalms. He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He said, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. No one host should encamp against me. My heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me, and this will I be confident. This one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire within his temple for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret tabernacle he shall hide me he shall set me up upon a rock and now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy hallelujah he said I will sing yea I will sing praises unto the Lord oh that's powerful praying That's get down transparent with God on an intimate level praying. But something about David, when he got to praying long enough, he would switch from the second person and just telling us about God and just rehearsing the goodness of God and just praising God. And he would step into that next phase where he began to talk not just about God, but he began to talk to God. He he began to step it up a level. And that, I believe, is where the secret place has. Or if you go to Psalms 27, he slips from the second person about just talking around him and to us about him and here and there. And he gets up close talking to God and he begins to say, here, O Lord. Now it's first person. Now it's me and you. Now, nobody else is in the room but the two of us when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger, for thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother, come on, not if, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. And he talks to him, he says, teach me thy way, O Lord. Lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over to the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. He ended by saying, I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. There are moments when we go past talking about God and we have got to go talking to God. It's the secret place. It's the secret weapon. It's the place where we find power and strength and grace. There should be moments in our lives, praise singers, when we go past singing about God 
and it becomes very personal and we start singing to God in the holy place for an audience of one, past the outer court, past the inner court, past the holy place until we stand face to face with him in the holiest of holies. There's times, y'all, that I've been on this platform and I've been preaching and the power and the anointing of God began to hit me and I quit preaching about God to y'all and I started preaching to God respectfully, but declaring what he said is declare his word before him, to allow his word to not return void. I begin to say, God, you said the glory of the latter house was going to be greater than the glory of the former house. God, you said I was the head and not the tail. You said I was above and not beneath. You said I would be a lender and not a bar. I want to remind you, Jesus, that the glory of the latter house would be greater than the glory of the former house. And in this, you said that I would be a, well, I would be a, a lender and not a bar. That greater was he that was in me than he that is in the world, you said that eye has not seen and ear has not heard, neither has it entered in the heart of man the things that you, God, have prepared for those that love you. There should be times when we stop with that and you just say, God, I know no weapon formed is going to prosper. Hallelujah. You said it. You declared it. Now I'm declaring your word back to you. Many times prayer is just that. It's just praying God's Word with an, a transparency, with a, a sincerity, with a desire and a longing for the heart of God. In Acts, the second chapter, the Apostle Peter stood and quoted from this passage that we read first today. But I want to go back to that original uncut, uncondensed verse in Joel 2.15. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the others. Gather the... Does that leave anybody out? Is there anybody exempt? You know, Jesus made three divine imperatives as he was speaking in his sermon on the mount. He said, when you give. He said, when you fast. And he didn't assume and say if. He said, when you pray. We all have an obligation. Samuel said, lest I sin by not bringing my prayer to God and praying for you. That's everybody. God wants us to get into an intimate place with Him. It goes on to say, let the bridegroom go forth of His chamber and the bride out of her closet. He compares it to a marriage relationship. God wants us to get husband and wife up close with Him in the secret place. God wants an honesty. He wants a transparency. He wants a first person. He wants an intimacy where we meet with Him face to face. He said, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch. He said, get your emotions involved in it. Let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to the reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Anybody feel like the heathen's been ruling over you? Feel like you've been under some unrighteous oppression? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. And then God quits talking about his people and goes into the first person to his people. Suddenly God takes the pen of the writer and makes it his own pen and his own mouth. But I, God says, first person, will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea and his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice for the Lord will do great things. And I'm going to skip all the way down to verse 23, and I'm going to tell you why you need to be glad, why you told your neighbor to cheer up this morning, because it's found, be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. We have a secret weapon here today to get double for your trouble. For your shame you shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, 
they shall possess the double. I'm going to jump all the way down to verse 28 because this is our prayer. This is our focus. This is our desire for elements this year. Elements 21, desiring that God would give us an apostolic revival and it shall come to pass afterward. That I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see Visions. God didn't wait until the second month or the fifth month or the ninth month. He said in the first month, I'm going to start blessing you as soon as you get on your knees. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Then will I forgive their sins. Then will I heal their land, the secret to all that starting was blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify fast, call a solemn assembly. Hallelujah. I want somebody just to stop for a second and change the atmosphere in this place and start worshiping. Would you do that? I don't want you to talk about God. I don't want you just to praise and say, bless the Lord. I want to say, you are my Lord. You are my King. You are my healer. You are my deliverer. You have made a way for me this week. You gave me breath in my body when I woke up today. I bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, let the saints of God arise. Let the mothers in Zion travail. Let the sons and daughters sing. He is your God. He is my God. Glory, glory, glory. Clap your hands, all you people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Come on, make it personal. It's our secret. We don't just come and sit in some kind of ecumenical environment. We are the people of the name. We are the church of the living God. We are the original Pentecostals. Woo! Hey, let's get back to our roots at Azusa Street where an old one-eyed preacher would sit behind a pulpit and pray until the glory came down. The saints of God would pray until the glory came down. The children would pray until the glory came down. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give him one more hand clap of praise. The devil needs to know whose team you're on today. Pastor needs to know whose team you're on today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of us are searching for a place in the kingdom, but we already have a place and a title and a position in the kingdom. It's lifting up holy hands without wrath or doubting. I would that men everywhere would pray to God, lifting up holy hands without wrath or doubting. In like manner also that women in modest apparel. You know what he does? He relates apparel and putting on clothes and coming to church with your best to showing up in service with a good prayer life. To showing up to church first thing to the prayer room. Thank you, team. Y'all gave us a great showing in the prayer room this morning. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. This is all about a man called Jesus in a place called Calvary. If we ever forget that, hang it up. God is looking for a people who live in the secret place. Who have a relationship instead of works. Matthew 7, 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in that name? And that name cast out devils. And in that name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess in them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. David had a secret. And that is why David had a relationship. And then that's why David found favor with God. I quoted it to you earlier, but let's look at it again. This one thing. David said, when I get up in the morning, there is one thing on my priority list. It's not taking care of the kingdom. It's not writing new psalms. He said, this one thing about desire of the Lord, and that will I seek out, that I might dwell in the house of of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire within his temple for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me I'm going to say it one more time they that dwell in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty do I have any secret folks here today 
Do I have any secret place seekers here today that seek the presence of God? Not just the hand of God, but we're seeking the face of God to be in His presence. It has to be a matter of of the heart you can come with a form and a tradition and sit on the same pew and do the same thing every week but that won't get you to heaven it has to be a matter of the heart a yearning and a burning for the presence of God God knows our hearts David said you see my uprising and my down sitting you know my thoughts are far he knows what I'm thinking sitting on the pew this morning if anybody like me enjoys good literature as a book series about Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn, and Huckleberry Finn came to a time in his life, he just decided he couldn't live a lie anymore, and he made this statement, it's a profound statement, you just can't pray a lie. In Psalms 95, the Lord said, 40, 40 years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, it is a people that do err in their heart. Maybe they dress right, maybe they walk right, maybe they talk right, maybe they acted right, but God said they've erred in their heart. And they have not known my ways. Remember what Jesus said? You have not known me. Unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my wrath. God is serious about this heart experience thing. God wants an up close personal experience. And I want to read you again what we quoted earlier. But I'm going to slow down so we get it this time. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Evidently, prayer and seeking God's face are two different things. You can come in and pray some rote prayer and go through and get your time in, or you can say, God, I have come to have communion with you today. I am talking to the heart of this church that we can't live on a yesterday experience or a grandfather experience or a grandmother experience. We've got to know him for ourselves in the power of his resurrection and sometimes the fellowship of his suffering. David said, when you said, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Psalms 27 and 8 in the amplified version says it this way, when you said, seek my face in prayer, require my presence as your greatest need, my heart said to you, your face, O oh Lord, I will seek on the authority of your word. I talked to him again Friday on the phone, evangelist Taylor Fish, and I want him to come if he gets the chance to preach this in person to this church because he's got a handle on prayer. I could tell from listening to him preach. And he said that he was seeking God's will for where he should be. And the, he said to the Lord in one of those one-on-one -on -one conversations, Lord, where is my place? And the Lord spoke to him and said the most neglected place in the kingdom of God is the secret place. The most neglected place in the church isn't a department or a position. It's the face of God. And there are a lot of people seeking stuff from God. And they've got a long list of prayer needs. But does anybody just want to spend time with Him and get to know Him and partner with Him and rub shoulders with Him and team up with Him and seek His face in the secret place where you walk out smelling like Him and talking like Him and walking like Him. And you come in there and you've got love and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness and temperance. You only get that kind of stuff in the secret place. You can't get that on YouTube. You can't get that on Facebook. You've got to get that buried with your face in the carpet in the presence of God. Jesus told us that He wasn't content with just a casual relationship. I'm not just going to live with you. John 14, he said, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. That's kind of second person. But now, even the Spirit of the truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. And I, he says, I, first person, will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. God wants to step out a second person in some of our lives and step up to first person. God longs for a physical, living, moving, breathing relationship. And it's in the air today. It's all around us. If I could just break through some of the distractions 
and some of the disparities and some of the discouragements that some of us have faced in 2020 and let you know God has a relationship for you in 2021 where you can live life and life more money. For the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I came. Come on, abundant life sanctuary. I don't want to just be a sanctuary. I want to be full of abundance and life. Not the church of the first frozen chosen. But an apostolic church, living, moving, breathing, for eye has not seen, and ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love Him. I'm quickly coming to a close. I see some of you looking at watches this morning. I saw a video of a man who died for an hour and 45 minutes. The descriptors, the pure light, the, the pure love, the colors, the sights, the sounds. He said it was absolutely mind-blowing. He said when he began to look at the colors in that dimension that he was at, he said literally there were colors that were not on the standard color scale. They were colors that literally almost could be smelled or sensed or touched. It was a new opportunity to be with his maker. Ladies and gentlemen, every time we enter this sanctuary to this altar... We have the opportunity to walk into the manifest presence of God and see things that aren't even on the normal experience, the normal color scale. I don't want to be distracted by texting or playing when it's time to dwell in the secret place. The most high. Not everybody has this kind of experience this morning. Nope, nope. Not everybody has this kind of opportunity to come in into the secret place. There was a missionary by the name of Asko Larson who went to South America and there was no apostolic church. In the course of his journeys, there was some difficulties. There were some circumstances they could not foresee. And in that particular place, his wife became very ill and sick during childbirth and she died. There was such poverty and so little resources in that foreign country he was ministering that he literally had to find the wood and build the casket for his own wife and bury her with his own hands. But around the place of that tragedy, and tragedy is always a crisis looking for an opportunity, people begin to rally, and they begin to get around that pastor, and they begin to not just feel for him, but they begin to take on his vision and his prayer life and his burden. And I heard... Brother, uh, in Bossier City, Brother Dean quote and say now, today, one out of every 60 people, one out of every 60 in Nicaragua are apostolic Pentecostals. Brother Pugh said, and used to say this, before you can have revival in a city, some part of you has to die. Some, some part of our person, some part of what we're holding on to, some habit, some hang up, some hurt we've not let go of that we're still holding to, maybe from a decade ago or years ago, until we let go of that, until we let God restore the joy of our salvation. Never will we have revival and allow us to turn sinners to him. But I've got good news for you today. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. I've come to encourage somebody in the house today that came low, that came frustrated, that came overwhelmed. If my people, which are called, I've got a secret for you today. I've got a secret place today. As we stand in this house, success in life can be measured in a number of ways. But I found the title that I'd really like to be labeled with this day I this week rather I went by dad's grave just this week to check up and see what was there as I did so I went up and to the left and went to another grave that's within just a few steps of his and I looked at the headstone and something on that headstone it just jumped off at it me that the, the four words at the bottom of that Headstone. It's hard to tell the whole story of an intercessor in a few words, but it brought me back to that morning. I fell down a flight of 17 stairs, and my head hit about every fifth stair. And when I got to the bottom and started going into seizures, reality was coming and going. And I would pass out, and I would come back again, and I would 
pass out and come back again. And then I remembered also as I would come to and the sound I could hear again and I could see again, the sound that I could hear was that precious aunt of mine, that precious prayer warrior that had prayed hours upon hours in each and every day. And she had prayed over me that moment. And I could hear, beyond the sounds of people working, anything, I could remember that prayer warrior in my ear. We left and went to the hospital by ambulance and got to the first hospital and said, he's got a brain bleed. Same thing, brain injury that had killed my brother. And I, I just something in my spirit and mind and soul just became fearful and overwhelmed. But something happened between the first hospital when they transported me to the second hospital because the second doctor said, no, there's no bleeding at all on his brain. And where I was, wasn't going to be able to drive for six months, I got in the car the next week and drove for the glory of God. I'm here to tell you, if you're going to call me anything, you can call me a pastor. You can call me a singer. You can call me an organizer. You can call me an administrator. But would you call me a man of prayer when it gets down to it? If my people, which are called by my name, if there's no other place I can go in this world, I want to be able to go to the secret place. A man of prayer, a pastor of prayer, a church of prayer, a family of prayer, a nation of prayer. It's really the secret to everything. Jesus got ready to name his house. and He didn't call it a house of prayer or the house of preaching. He said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. And when he got through overturning the tables and driving out the money changers, I imagine Jesus wiped the sweat from his brow and he declared, My house, with authority, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Bundle Life Sanctuary, I have lived too long and I've seen too much revival in my short life to just accept anything but an on fire revival apostolic church birth in the house of prayer and I don't have any more catchy videos for you I don't have any more catchy titles or phrases I don't know anywhere else to talk the people of God into knowing that this is the path forward other than just to give everybody an opportunity and as David said oh taste and see you just got to try it out for yourself you just got to put God to the test and try him at his word, he said, try me and see if I will not open the windows of heaven. And does anybody with me believe that in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh? Your sons and daughters are going to prophesy. Your old men are going to dream dreams. Your young men are going to see visions upon the handmaids. God is going to pour out of his Spirit, I believe if my people, which are called by mine, if the mothers in Zion will travail. So as they sing, I'm invited us for an old-fashioned altar call. Well, we don't just come and stand and then get, leave in two or three minutes. But that the people of God, the elders of God, the mature saints of God, the leaders of God would make their way down. As you lower the lights just a little bit back there, be so kind to do that. Both the stage lights and the house lights, lower those down some. And I'm asking you to come and just find a secret place. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I'm getting ready to step off this platform and I'm going to hand this service. If you can kneel physically, if you feel safe to kneel, there's, there's altar from that side all the way around. There's altar right here in front of the, the organ. There's altar all across the front. There's altar on this side. There's altar right there. We'll make the first pew an altar. We'll make the second pew an altar. But I'm calling on the saints of God to get somewhere way down deep. There's something in your spirit that's been empty. You've tried politics. You've tried binge watching on Netflix. You've tried reaching everything you can get a hold of to reach out to some relationship to fulfill you. And I'm here to tell you, nothing can fill a God-shaped hole but the manifest presence of God. I'm talking to people who know what it is to be on their knees, who know what it is to be involved in all night prayer meetings, who know what it is to be a part of prayer and fasting chains. Well, it's time for the church to be the church. Rise up, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. <laughs> glory, glory, glory.
the blessing will be upon you and your children and their children and all of them that are far off even as many as the Lord our God shall call come on let's turn this house into a secret place let's turn this house into a prayer room if my people if my people if my people if my people hallelujah let's find a place to pray sing it singers Oh! 